Hi there, welcome to uh, my, uh, well, well, I think we're just calling it a total utter mess at the moment, but it's also known as my workshop. You'll remember in my last video that I was uh, showing you how I do my marquetry. Uh, that's because I'm doing a project at the moment. It's taken a long time, uh, but it's a hallway table with a marquetry on the top, and the marquetry's already been uh, pressed, and that's all good. Uh, I'm now working on the drawers. But the when drawers. it actually came to gluing up, is when I uh, I came a cropper. My mortise and tenons. I've cut plenty of mortise and tenons, and these, for some reason. I just absolutely f them up. I say for some reason, I know why, I was rushing. Um, you can see here, look. I've got splits coming through the wood. I know why this has happened. For some reason, I did not make the tenons longer than they should be. And so they wouldn't break out. And to be honest, I'm embarrassed. And there's no way that I can leave them like this. So the reason I'm showing you this is just we're, we're all human. We all make mistakes and I'm not prepared to waste this wood. Um, in an ideal world, we're, we're, I'd start again, but I, I don't want to waste this wood. Um, so I want to fix this. Um, and this is what I want to show, how I fix things, because we all make mistakes, we're all human. Um, but it's about how we do fix them so that we don't have to waste the wood. Stick around and uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can save this one. So, as you'll see, routed that out as much as I wanted to. I'll now chisel back and clean that up nicely. I'll do, and do that to every other mortise and tenon. Um, that's using the chisel to go back slowly, a small bit at a time, back towards the, uh, the maple, sh maple shoulder line there. Now, this is the one that's got the split in it. So I need to make sure I get out all of that maple wedge. Okay, uh, you probably tell it's a lovely day outside, it's actually pouring down. Uh, what I've done is I've used the screw, screwdriver to go back in the wedge just to open it up a little bit, just so. My plan is to use okay, thin, get that down, that will run down through the crack and then I can close it up with a clamp and that should be uh, that crack dealt with. Gentle. I make that run through pretty quick into the crack. Okay, we'll get that screwdriver out pretty quick and now close that crack up. Okay, done up. Don't worry about this glue, I'll deal with that afterwards. I say knife, I mean chisel. So, 
So the other one, smaller drill at the crack that can now be accessed quite easily. So I don't know if I'm going to regret this, probably. Um, so I know it needs to be shortened in this direction to bring this square. Um, yeah, should be interesting. Uh, I'll try this first just gently and see what give there is. I'm not really not sure, but I can't leave it as it is, so we'll see what happens. All right, so I reckon this is the point you lot are going to start swearing at me. Um, but I, I've done this before and I have had a little bit of success in this, so I'm going to give it a go. Um, but oh, sorry. forgive me for what I'm about to do. Oh dear. Okay. Yes, I am doing this, and I can't believe I'm doing this, but I am. <sighs> this is going to go bad, I know it is. I'm going to let that soak in. Okay, we're going to flip it over, and we're going to do the same to the other side. Okay, so I've left that for about, soaking for about... 20 minutes. Okay. I'm hoping that softened the glue up a bit. It certainly softened up the squeeze out. You can see that. So, so you'll notice that this white line is actually where the, the, the jaws can be curved to. So I don't actually have to worry about clamping against this edge at the moment um, because it's going to be sanded away. And I'm going to check where square is. It's there. Can you see probably? So, okay, so you can see I've got it under compression. And I'm actually going past where I want to be. Okay. So I'm putting extra tension there. Now, this is the bit you'll all either love or cringe at. So, here we go. Yep. Just soak this rag. Okay. And I'm going to put it over that outside joint. It's nice and wet, okay? And I'm going to get my steam iron, which has been heating up for a while now. And we're gonna get on the side. Like so. And hold it. What I'm attempting to do here, is by stressing the fibers in this wood, through the compression, it's putting the stress on those fibers. And by so when they're soaked, and then dried, they should, sometimes, they have done for me in the past, um, settle in that position a bit better and remain in that position. Just one side, okay? So I'm gonna dip this rag again, and then I'm gonna to want to come in on this side, so I just need to angle this so I can actually uh, do this effectively. Okay, so I've got that, got that set back in another position so I can access this side better. Again, I'm going to soak the rag. I believe this was my daughter's t-shirt. Lay that over, like so. I'm going to get the iron. Hold it on there. 
heat those fibres up when they're stressed and swollen through the wood, through the water. And heat those fibres up. By doing that, drying them quickly, and I'm hoping that they will settle in that position. I've overstressed this, so it's gone the other way. I'm expecting to have some sort of spring back. So let's bring it back up right. Let's see where we are. Right, so I'm massively over compressed at the moment. And I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to let it cool down, let it dry out a bit. Okay, so it's now been in there 20 minutes whilst uh, the wood dries off a little bit. Check it now. You can see it's bang on. Wonderful. And it's, that's its rested position. Yeah, bang on. Excellent. The result of the steaming process is obviously the wood expands. Um, what that's left us with is a few a high point there. That's that is what is causing this rather monumental rock. <laughs> you can actually see it. That's where the box is. Uh, the drawer is rocking. So easily sorted. We'll get the plane out. Okay, so got it clamped in the vise. Our lump is there. Okay. Just coming in now. Shoulder plane. Shave the top off of that lump. I've decided that if I'm cheating with these uh, Watson Tenon repairs, then I may as well look at, make it look nice. So I'm going to make some um, wedges that are from Maple and Purple Heart, which goes ties in with the other projects I've done. So I'm now going to glue these together, uh, or laminate them, and once they're dry, I'll be able to cut them up into the pieces and uh, use them as wedges. Okay, just gonna use type one too, nice and quick. I don't be waiting around all day for this. Essentially, it only needs to hold together whilst I'm making the wedges and inserting them. These rollers are great. You don't end up putting too much glue on. You know, he says. <laughs> so what have I done? Put far too much glue on, but there we go. Let's try and transfer it over a bit. Okay. Okay, so I laminated those uh, three pieces, uh, two pieces of maple, one purple heart. 
and then I pass them back through the thicknesser to get them down to a little bit less than five mil. Um, I then cut them off in equal dimensions. These will be the wedges. So to give one end a bit of a taper just so it is slightly oversized so it'll go in nicely and we'll uh, close up the gap. I then have some off offcuts of this actual walnut and I've cut that across the grain because the pieces that will be protruding from here would be end grain so I need it to be in grain and it's the same wood so I can also try and make sure that the, uh, the grains going in the right direction the, the growth rings in the right direction so hopefully it'll blend in so first things first we need a bench hook let's get that in place what I want to do Is I'm going to get an oversized, slightly oversized wedge, I think. Can you see? Just there. This will be easy to cut because it's straight down through the grain. Okay. That could do. too much I want it to fill the gap right now we need to create a wedge There we go, that's what we're going to make. All we need to do now is stick some glue in. So, I want to. Take one, okay, so first things first, clear out anything in there. Don't go too mad because I don't know if you can see, it's light. Coming through there, I've got to be really careful. I mean, it's only going to be glue, but I'd rather not have too much glue squeeze out, so actually, I might take. Shouldn't do. Those are glue squeeze out, it's what we want. So I was just uh, cleaning up the excess glue off of these dovetails before I uh, planed the sides down. And I was just interested to see how good the joints were. I noticed on the other drawer when I did that, it closed when I heated it up with the iron and then soaked it, um, it closed my dovetails up. So, another little trick there. I was just seeing if this required the same thing. So, what I'm going to do is scrape off this top layer. I just wanted to point out <laughs> how sharp these Japanese chisels are. They're insane. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. No break out because I'm gently slicing. And actually, what it shows is that these dovetails are actually really good. Okay, so I've taken um, 
let them dry, let the glue dry for about an hour, hour and a half, and I have cut the wedges back, and now I've just got to flush them off with a plane. I'm going to try with the um, small block plane. It's probably a palm plane, brilliant little thing. If not, I use the trusted. Never lets me down. I think we can say that that looks a million times better than that with the purple heart in there. Just a nice little touch. Let's do the rest of the drawers. So we're fast forward in a few weeks now. I managed to lose the footage of the final overview of the repair. So I thought I'd just do this for you now. I think you'll agree. It looks a million times better. You can probably tell from the drawer that the table is actually now finished. I am in the process of editing that video and I will uh, I'll post it as soon as possible. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I didn't want to waste this wood. I needed to repair it. And it just goes to show that things can be repaired. I'd like to point out here that these drawers, the most they're gonna hold is a, a set of keys and a wallet. You wouldn't wanna repair most antennas that were really gonna be even structural but this isn't, so. The repairs were necessary. As I said at the beginning of the video, I, I, I couldn't leave it in that, that state. Um, so this is how I repaired it. I, I, I'm really pleased with how, it, how it's come out. The methods I've used during this video are probably gonna be frowned upon, um, but if there's one thing I have learned in woodworking, if it works, do it. Obviously I'm not the first person to use a steam iron to repair my woodwork. Um, it's a well-known method to repair things dense and it's very very effective thank you so much for watching if you like what you've seen please hit like and maybe consider subscribing see you in the next video